How y'all doing? I want to welcome y'all to Strawberry Space, where we discuss transgender related topics. Why do you think that is? I think that a lot of the transgender community, they're so, they push so much for acceptance that when you immediately, like, or anytime you start to, like, question them, even if it's, like, out of the kind of goodness of your heart to try and make sure that they're making the right decision, anything that goes against their narrative is just immediately labeled as transphobic. Now, after you started the transition, uh, how else did you begin to change your life to live as a man? I had changed my name. I started wearing a binder. Um, I even moved cities because at the time I was very um, hesitant to actually come out to like coworkers. So I had moved about four hours away. I got a completely different job and introduced myself as a trans man. Okay. And what happened when you began to schedule time to get a double mastectomy? I haven't had any uh, top surgeries, but I did get approved for it. Um, I think and that's how, what it is. You got approved for I it. I did. I got approved. And how that worked, it was scarily easy to do because I had just called a therapist um, and I had scheduled one appointment, one, for like a 30-minute session to talk about. And I essentially walked in. I said, I identify as transgender and I want to get top surgery. And we chatted for a bit, maybe for half an hour. And at the end of the session, she wrote me an approval letter to send to my insurance. And then I got approved just like that. When, when you first started, you went in, you said to Planned Parenthood, yes. and they gave you testosterone mm -hmm. immediately. Yeah, I essentially just made a phone call and said, I want, I want to transition, and it was immediately given. I got a prescription and went to pick it up like a week later. Did they ask you questions? Did they do any psychological testing? Did they ask you why? Nope. What was your motive? It was completely self-diagnosed self-diagnosed i claimed that i had gender dysphoria and i wanted to transition and they didn't really ask me any questions about it i just called them and i said when can i when can i get this and they just said they needed to write me a prescription for it and send it and that's essentially you, you had no proof that you were i never saw a therapist about you, it you didn't yeah i didn't talk to anyone about it nobody medically professionally i had just looked up i did some like trans research i guess into the transgender community and everybody online and they just seemed so happy and successful and at the time i didn't see any information on detransition or any like the negatives about it and so i kind of got completely wrapped into that so you're, you're saying that the burden of having to live you know trap not being able to get access to the care that that you wanted the transition that you wanted to do you're saying you, you don't know that you would have been able to carry that burden to 18. I know for a fact that I definitely would not have been able to make it to where I am now without the medical professional help that I was given at the age I was. And I wouldn't be here. What, what is it about it that would have been more than you could endure? It was just being stuck in a body that wasn't mine for too long. I could not handle that. I was so young and it needed to happen when it happened. And I was a swimmer and putting on a swimsuit and being in the wrong body, I could not handle that. And I ended up quitting the swim team and I had to transition to live my life. I couldn't go outside anymore. I couldn't live. I couldn't breathe in this body that was not mine. You just felt alien to you. Yeah, yeah, completely. Now, how were you certain that that is what it was versus something else? I always knew I went to bed at five years old. I want to be a boy. Wake me up tomorrow as a boy. It was always boy toys, boy McDonald's meals, boy everything. I was a boy, just not on the outside. Okay. I always knew. What was the first thing that you were allowed to do? Cut my hair, change my name, pronouns, that's it. That's okay. all. And how did that affect you? Happiest day of my life. I got my hair cut. I still have that hair <laughs> in a plastic bag in my room. You and saved I, it? Yeah, I saved it. My mom <laughs> did. She was like, I'm saving this. And it was yeah. the best feeling ever. All right. And you ultimately had surgery? Yeah, I had a double mastectomy just last year in November. Okay. And why did you wait several years to do that? I had a very small chest, so it was easy to be able to push it aside, wear my binder for a little bit longer, wait till I'm older. Okay. And did you feel the need to wait? Did you think, you know, this, I could change, I could feel differently? What? I didn't want to wait. I, wanted, I was eligible at 15. I went to get it at 15 and I just 
was too young to go through with it at that age for myself personally, but someone who has a bigger chest, who's also that age, would not definitely need it if they felt like they did, and I think they should be able to get it. You say denying it for others is transgenocide. Yes. It, is that because you say it would have been death to you if, if you had had the opportunity? Death to me and many others. So, hey, Strawberry Space. So, that was a little snippet of the detransition transgender and youth episode on your favorite, Dr. Phil. So, they all four were on talking about their experiences transitioning um, at ages under 18. So, they it was kind of like a middle ground conversation where it was two who transitioned and detransitioned and then they regretted their decision and the other two that didn't so y'all know i transitioned at 19 so i was kind of on you know the cusp with it so i'm gonna play the other set of the people who were for it and then we're gonna discuss it so let's take a look about who they are then we have an obligation to support them I've worked with thousands of trans youth over the years. Many stories are very similar to my own. I personally came out when I was eight and went on hormones when I was 15, had surgery when I was 17, and have no regrets. There is, frankly, a, an unprecedented moral panic over trans people right now that's completely unnecessary. Trans people, to put it simply, just want to be left alone. We want to be supported by our communities, and we really want respect. Well, is that true? Do trans people want to be just left alone, or are they insisting that everybody stand up and make an affirmation that they're doing the right thing in the right way at the right time? Because those are two different things. What we're asking for is basic respect. We're not going around and um, teasing other people, at least hopefully. And so we are really just asking for our genders to be respected, how we want to have autonomy over our own bodies respected, and not to um, um, disavow our own choices over our own bodies. I'm sure you will agree that there are people that start the process for the wrong reasons in the wrong way. The wrong Absolutely, reasons. and um, I mean, most places point between one and 2.5% of people detransition, and even smaller number of those have any regrets. It's also important to point out the number one reason for detransition is because transphobia. And so creating more and unnecessary boundaries for transitioning ultimately does harm our community. So I will be dissecting each character one by one. But first, Reese, do you like black girls? Call me because Reese was fine, like with a wine. He was fine. Um, He's saying that he was able to shave his head and, you know, how the pronouns was just simply immaculate. And I'm glad how adamant he was, how stern. He didn't go off topic. He didn't, you know... Dr. Bush, Dr. Phil asked him a question, he answered it. It was like, no, like, the answer was no, I never regretted it. Yes, you know, it's boy this, boy that. It just was giving very much confidence and affirmation. Now, on to this synthetic, stale, stanky silver wig. <laughs> Girl, why would you go on TV against your community. Don't you see when they say, oh, they're sick in the head, they have a mental illness, they always do this, them is not a, a pronoun. They always want special treatment. You think just because you transition back, you're exempt from that conversation, sweetheart? No, you're not. I'm sorry that this didn't work out for you, transitioning from a girl to a boy, now back to a girl, but... Throwing us under the bus won't give you the answers that you want. And you're feeding this right to him on his platform. You're giving him exactly what you want. And other trans youth are listening to this going, how could you? And their parents are like, so maybe you do need to wait till 18. No, it's, it was something that happened to you in your experience. This doesn't reflect the whole community. It just because you couldn't cope with it or it was just too hard for you to be a man or, you know what I'm saying, it didn't work out for you doesn't apply to everyone. 
And I hate that they use the scapegoat like what best to attack someone in their community but someone in their community. And you fell right for the bait. For the other girl, um, I forgot her name. I think it was Laura, the one uh, opposed to Ryan. It's a, such a shame that she um, regrets her decision. She's very pretty. And, um, you know, her going from male to female, you know, is so unfortunate because, you know, trans women um, I'm in the strawberry space. Y'all know that the girls uh, experience so much more hate. Um, I, like I said, it is not really an oppression issue with being black and trans. Even though we're a triple minority on top of being women, white trans women have it harder to hell women have it harder, you know. Um, I just wish that also, too, like Ryan, she get a bit of wig. But in addition to that, that they find it within themselves to at least be an ally and advocate for somebody who can take the pain of it. Because if it is a trend that they couldn't do now that it's becoming more acceptable, keep that same energy when we become more open minded and we as trans people get more support because it should have been easy the younger you start and now go into your truth like it should be easier for you to go stealth if you go in with your youth now that you're an adult of course it's going to be more difficult now but you know to each his own and last but not least Eli she articulated and, and just expressed everything so calmly and adequately for um, the opposing argument for trans youth transitioning, and I love it. What I really love about it was she was not aggressive, passive aggressive. She came in very calm and educated. Um, one thing I will critique about her, though, um, she is the new uh, showman for Somersault, which is an LGBT clothing line for swimsuits. Um, I just wish she would have brought it more, you know, with being feminine, because for those at home, I recorded this from the TV, by the way, this is via clips cited from Dr. Phil. Had I been in the audience and not on the TV, I would have thought it would have been two girls on the left for the transition and get two uh, men on the right for transitioning. The hair didn't do it for me. She got a nice voice and cheekbones and makeup, but I, I mean, you're not that girl, honey. You know, Rihanna can rock those short haircuts. She is cunt and has a nice face, but I just, you know, more warmer features and the hair, if it would be longer for me, she really mastered it in the pictures she had growing up versus to date because I wasn't sure if she was male to female or female to male is no shade but once you know I saw her accolades and the subtitles I was like okay because you know it's more of a gender neutral look and you have to be careful with some of the shade size and shortcuts and pixie and bobs and you know it, your message might get lost in translation because they're gonna already see someone who transitioned from a woman to a man back to a woman so they're like are you a man to a woman a woman a man you know sometimes it's okay to socially transition as well as uh you know just do it internally and emotionally too she's wonderful and she's doing great for our community otherwise i love you girl you know it's all just positive criticism at the end of the day. So this aired, I think, two or three days ago. And like I said, it was a powerful discussion. So for everybody who's thinking about transitioning, I just want you to know that whatever age you are, let your parents be in on it. Please do not add insult to injury and gasoline to the fire by already going against what we trying to do <laughs> as transmitted women in strawberry space, pushing for under 18 and go do it behind their back. Just have their support. And then if they don't support you at that time, you have to unfortunately wait till you're 18. I'm sorry. So this has been Strawberry Space and thank you.